Welcome to the Enlighten Up Podcast, where I am going to take you into a deep exploration of what it means to exist in this current reality. We are going to raise your vibes, open your mind, expand your heart, and dive deep into the wondrous mysteries and possibilities of this lifetime. There's been a spiritual catalyst that has set in motion the awakening process of many across the globe to return to the knowingness of self and unite what has been separated. Together, we're going to bring light into that darkness. We're going to remember the joy of living. But most of all, we're going to turn up the volume of our own eternal power and do the thing we're here to do. everyone welcome back to the enlighten up podcast and i hope you're having a very happy holiday as we're coming off christmas for those of you who celebrate it i am of course joined by my favorite mystic mary Ducina, seer astrologist and scorpio queen of the sky how are you doing today how are your holidays blessed you know i i get all excited my my dear tara star sister and hello audience I get excited at the turning of the wheel, you know, of having my First Nations Native American studies, and I blend that with with my constellations and my astrological studies. I just like, for me, everybody does it a different way, but I love blending the medicine wheel and the seasons with the constellations and the stars, and I get excited at equinox and solstice points. I just Mm. get excited at, I like to look up the myths and the legends, whether it's Persian or Native American or Babylonian. I mean, there's so much that I think that we um, maybe people that are like 30 and under miss a lot if we don't go into a little bit of historical origin, you know, and I like etymology. I like the, the word meanings, like where did that word come from? And not just Latin, but what does that word mean um, kind of like cross-culturally in many cultures and languages? Because, you know, we open up Capricorn in the Northern Hemisphere, especially we have winter solstice in the Northern Hemisphere. And so Yuletide, to me this year, the new moon that was on 1212, we had 10 days that we had 10 supercharged frequency days of kind of whether we wanted to or not, with Mercury retrograde on the 13th of December, starting to look back at, wow, what, I'm gonna, I know it's not New Year's Eve yet, and it's not Capricorn yet, but I want to start to look at, you know, while we're busy doing our errands and meeting up for the, for the latte or whatever, we start beginning to look at and how, what has 2023 taught me? Because when you're in the new moon of Sag, you're looking at beliefs and are they still cherished and are you going sideways with them? Or is it time to shed a particular cultural belief or truth and move into some multidimensional ways? Like instead of just saying third dimensional on something, Like, you know, a lot of people tell me, yeah, when I went to school, they said there's absolutely no water on the moon and there absolutely wasn't this on Mars. And now 40 years later, they're going, oh, by the way. So, you know, I remind myself, one of my belief monikers in life is the only constant is change. Mm -hmm. And so when we get into Mars and Sagittarius and we get into the new moon and Sagittarius and then rolling toward this magical strongest by sign, constellation, legend and myth, strongest full moon of 2023 to close out this year. You know, when we have this beautiful moon rising in the sign Cancer, the crab moon child is what the ancient astrologers referred to this sign. We look at the crab, we look at the ocean totem for this sign. And, you know, when a crab gets you in its pinchers, you know, people say, oh, I just love crab legs and I just love crab meat. You know, it's like a tortoise. You've got that hard shell on the outside. I mean, you've got the tender you know, to be a lot of people that like crab, they'll say it's a very sweet meat inside of there. So you've got the crustaceans and you've got like, it, you know, for cancer, the crab, its inner nature is its home. It literally, you look at a hermit crab, it literally runs to a shell and that's its home. And a hermit crab, crabs, cancer, the crab and Taurus, just by nature of the star stories, they don't like change. You know, give Taurus 
a beautiful pasture and some companion bulls and cows. And except for mating time competition, they're cool. Hey, bring me that roundup hay and all, you know, it's just like, I don't have to go anywhere. Bring me that. Oh, roll that hay up and bring it right over here. Yeah. Roll it over here. And I'm good. Go now, farmer go. And, you know, cancer, the crab, when you spend a lot of time living on the beach, like I did, you start seeing the fiddler crabs and the, and the horseshoe crabs. And, you know, they scurry, they get curious but they scurry away from you sideways and they go backwards. But if they happen to put their crab claws or their pinchers into you, you'll remember it. And I've known a lot of people <laughs> with cancer risings or cancer moons. And if they go to correct their, their pets or their kids or their lover, they'll pinch them. It'd be like, they'll do a soft pinch to get their attention. I've had <clears throat> parents that were strong with a cancer moon, cancer sun or cancer rising, and they would pinch their kid and mass or at church, they wouldn't say anything, just pinch them and to give them that, you know, laser beam look of like, settle down now. <laughs> so, I mean, the pinch, you know, and you know, then there's, then there's sensual pinches, you know, and then there's like, I want to get your attention, you know, we're having like a little silent telepathic smile between lovers kind of a thing. So cancer is, you know, you've got a full moon in cancer. And I, and I, I kept hearing psychically beyond Kwanzaa and beyond Christmas and the and the Festival of Lights of Hanukkah, I kept hearing psychically, for those of you that have never watched any version of The Wizard of Oz, yeah, walk back in time while Mercury's retrograde and watch the original, read the, the go on YouTube and Frank Baum's original version, like the older versions of The Wizard of Oz, because Dorothy goes on a vision quest, the main character, and she has this dog named Toto, which is short for totem. So her animal totem is Toto, the little dog, the little Karen Terrier dog. And the whole reason that she runs away from home <clears throat> and she can't stand this mean woman who ends up being the Wicked Witch of the West neighbor that wants to take her dog and lies and wants to take it to the pound. She runs away. She meets a fortune teller. A big storm is coming, like the storms of life. A big tornado is coming. And he says, oh, my gosh, you better get back home. So she gets the dog, the dog jumps out of the mean woman's bicycle basket. She runs home. They've all gone down into a tornado shelter. They don't hear her. The storm comes, the tornado lifts the house off its foundation, the home off its foundation. And she ends up in a whole different magical land. So it's like the original type of thing before the Avatar movie. You know, she goes into a whole different magical land, similar to the other movie, The Lion, Witch, and the Wardrobe. And she encounters all these multi-dimensional creatures there's munchkins there's flowers that talk there's a good witch named glinda and so she ends up and all of a sudden she's got these ruby slippers on her feet and they're magical the feet are pisces we have neptune and saturn in pisces right now so she's totally bewildered but she's content that oh look toto my totem dog is with me begins and you start to learn about psychological and spiritual archetypes with the scarecrow she meets up with, these anomalous creatures wants a brain, the tin man feels like he needs a heart, and the lion feels like he needs courage, and she's got to do battle with the light and the dark of the witcheries. So, but her whole thing through the song is, uh, through the whole movie, is how do I get back home? And at the end, when the magical good witch says to her, well, you've had the power all along, dear, and Dorothy goes, looks at her like, what are you talking about? You know, like, I've gone through all this trouble and all this bizarre stuff in this land of Oz, the good, bad, and ugly. And you're telling me that these magical slippers that the Wicked Witch wanted to kill me for is that I could have gone home anytime I wanted to. And so Dorothy looks at her and the, the, the magical shaman, good witch, Glinda, who's always in pink and has an auric bubble around her, looks at her and said, you've had the power all along. And Dorothy looks at her and she goes, why didn't you, like, why didn't you tell me? And she goes, because you wouldn't have believed me if I did. So the point of the movie is you had to take the journey to understand the traditions and what is the lure, what is the magic of our foundation, Capricorn. Foundation, what are the traditions and what is our definition in 2023 of people that feel like they're in their home base, but yet they feel lonely or they feel empty. And when you, when you look at the story of Christmas, and you go on um, your favorite search engine or go on YouTube and you listen, you look at the lyrics of the song, Away in a Manger. So Joseph and Mary had to leave 
where they were at because whoever the king was, forgive me for forgetting, had sent out a decree because there was going to be the you know a, a supernatural king you know that would surpass any king or ruler on the country. So they so he sent out this thing that he was going to kill all the male firstborns as that uh, as we study. And so they had to go in exile. So they're on this donkey. She's heavy laden with child. There's no room at the inn. So the Christ child or the Savior child is born in a manger in the barn with just animals around. So basically, that which is known as Jesus of the Savior was born homeless. Like there was no room at the inn. No, we're too full. Go out in the barn. Oh, she's pregnant. Go out in the barn. So there was like, if you will, from the symbology of no, you can't come here. I mean, who doesn't have sympathy for a woman that's going to give birth? I mean, really, that's kind of cold. So they go to the manger. She has the support of Joseph as it goes. Now, the lowest class of people in that region at that time were like the, like you would look like drifters or, or outcasts were the shepherds. And the shepherds, they smelled like the sheep. They lived in the pasture. They had to. That was their livelihood they had to protect the sheep from the wolves or whatever the predators were of that time so an angel appears to these shepherds out in the woods and and gives them a vision of like you need to go to bethlehem so when you start doing the etymology or the research about solstice and what's going on with the s-u-n and then you look at the traditions that speak about the holy s-o-n you have to go back in time to shepherds looking at the stars and humans and from Neanderthal or whatever our origins were. You know, we think about the internet and we think about electricity or maybe kerosene lamps or electric light bulbs and heaters and all gas, you know, in your home. But the stories, people stared at the night sky and they would try to get stories and guidance and wisdom from those signs and wonders to behold that even talks about in the Bible. So there'd be groups of stars, they became constellations. They started noticing that there were 12 constellations as the sky moved. Uh, that became the zodiac. It acted as a giant clock, which denotes maybe the 12 months, the four seasons, when to plant, when to harvest. People started to spread these stories verbally about the night sky, cave them, carve them on caves, you know, start to pass down this information. And the astronomical events, comets were a big deal. So they were trying to preserve the information from generation to generation, ancestors and elders, as it, uh, what looks to us like elaborate myths and stories was their GPS. That was their starry compass. So the ties to the starry skies, the constellations, the astronomical events that were by the storytellers long ago still are in effect today. So the most important heavenly body was our great star of the Milky Way, the sun. The, the sun. It's a star. So one of the most important solar events of the year in the in the legends is the winter solstice. So we call it in the northern hemisphere the shortest light period of the year, the shortest day and the longest night. And the astronomy of that is that the tilt of our earth, our mama earth, Pachamama's earth, Gaia, is the axis of the earth is the cause of the shortening of the time the sun is, quote, up as the northern hemisphere tilts away from the sun, then the sun rises farther to the south each day. That's why in the southern hemisphere, it's the beginning of their summer solstice. So on the 21st, 22nd of December, by apparent motion, like Mercury retrograde, no, Mercury doesn't really go backwards, but, but, but we all can study about the apparent motion of Mercury or retrograde planet. The sun stops solstice, sun stands still. The sun stops rising farther south each day, coming toward Yuletide solstice, winter solstice, and it remains apparently, to the naked eye, motionless, rising at the same point. So sun standing still, Latin sol, sun, and sister to stand still, the solstice indicates the sun is standing still in its declination. So the seasonal movement of our great star, the sun's path as seen from Earth, so geocentric, comes to a stop before reversing directions. So these people didn't have sophisticated gear, telescopes. I mean, early observers like, oh, look, the sun's rising at the exact same place for three days. And then it started to move in an opposite or different direction. So to them, and I love this metaphysically too, Nicole and audience, the sun is, quote, 
reborn as it starts to move again. So it rises slightly to the north each day, and then days start to get longer again. Thus, the sun dies, and after three days, it's reborn. Think mm -hmm. about the crucifixion. So the astronomical situation gets personified even more in these stories because we have the Southern Cross. So since the Earth is tipped, the Northern Hemisphere viewers, that's us, where I'm at in Tennessee, where you guys are, we can see a few additional constellations at night from the hemispheres at that point in winter solstice. So we can see a little bit more of the Southern Hemisphere when we are at the point of winter solstice in the Northern Hemisphere. So particularly the one that's the most famous when you look at the mystical legends of this time of year, Yule, Yuletide, the Yule log, the holly and the ivy and the evergreen is the Southern Cross. And it's exposed, as the story goes, on that night over 2,000 years ago, you can't see it anymore as we've moved forward due to what we call the procession of the Earth's axis. But in those days, the Magi, the three kings, it made sense that viewing the C-R-U-X, Latin for cross, would be linked with the death of the sun. So the sun dies on the cross. And at the center of this is the brightest star Sirius in the belt of Orion. So those of us in the Northern Hemisphere may not be familiar with the legend and the myths of a Southern Cross, Southern C-R-U-X or Southern Cross, which is what we use to find the Polaris for the South Pole. So when the Earth is tipped to its maximal extent at winter solstice, this constellation could be seen peaking over the horizon in parts of the Northern Hemisphere some 2,000 years ago. So this is where the sun rises at winter solstice coming into what we celebrate as the mass of Christ, Christmas. So the winter solstice gets pointed out by a line formed through the brightest star in the night sky, Sirius, and through the, wait for it, three stars of Orion's belt, which is referred to as the three kings. So if you draw a line, you can find this on YouTube, it's great stories. If you can draw a line through the three kings in Orion's belt through Sirius, the brightest star, and you continue to the eastern horizon just after dark, in this month of December, those stars point out the, loca the location where the sun is actually going to rise on the next day. So then we have the story of the sun, the son of God who dies on the cross and then rises from the dead after three days to be reborn. The birth is pointed out by the brightest star in the east, Sirius, followed by the Magi, the three kings. The winter solstice happens either on the 21st, 22nd, and then the birth as the sun rises occurs three days later on December 25th. And as anyone knows that's ever studied astronomy or astrology, the sun then visits each of the 12 constellations through the star stories throughout the year. So these followers of the sun are the source of the story of 12 disciples, the zodiac symbolized as a circle like the face of a clock. And it's got a vertical line Dissecting the, bisecting the horizontal line, and then we have 12 positions for each of these constellations. So it's in the Celtic cross. It's on the native people's medicine wheel. So it's, the story gets retold a little differently around the world, but that's Capricorn now. It's like, is your cultural tradition Buddhist? Are you celebrating Kwanzaa? Are you um, studying Christmas and the story of the birth of Jesus? So uh, what what is it that that you see as what gives you there's no place like home, like in the Wizard of Oz. So when you carry these traditional con connections, Capricorn is the foundation. Capricorn is the mountain. It's how the goat or how we keep climbing up from the, our point of origin is, is little helpless infants and what we, what we desire or ascribe to be. It, it's how we move and start to decide whether we agree with our parents or our adopted parents or, you know, any of the people, teachers or courses that we study or ceremonies or life courses and shamanic ventures and, and all the things that can alter and inspire our consciousness. Capricorn at the end of the year, as we look at the, the seasons of the signs being the 10th sign, we're up at the Zenith, we're at the mid heaven and Capricorn saying, say, Give me three people, give me three people at whatever biological age you are right now that greatly 
influenced your life path of where you know you leaned in to being the best, better version of yourself, more of your, made you choose to be brave and bold enough to be your authentic self, whether they accepted you or rejected you or not. It takes courage, it takes boldness to let your hair down and be the real you and be the real you without needing someone else's approval or, and or without wanting to push someone mm-hmm. to see it or believe it like you do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And with this solstice coming in, like just days before the full moon in cancer and you, you and I are recording on this winter solstice today. And I just guided so people through a winter solstice ceremony that nice. included um, a message, a prayer and a guided meditation. And of course the theme was around the death and rebirth uh, energies. And it just so happened, you know, of course I like to pick a card for our full moons uh, readings. And uh, when we do these podcasts and the card that I that flew out of the deck today. I mean, it couldn't be more appropriate, especially with everything that you've been talking about. So let me share with the audience here, and I'm going to show them the card, um, the crossing. Uh, Mm. And you can see uh, a big stone crossing across a canyon. Okay. And Mm. it's all cloudy, but there's also a portal open on the crossing as someone's, as they're walking across it, uh, a golden portal that's lighting up. And the this is a rite of passage, an initiation. And it says, you have come to stand on one side of a river. The opposite bank leads into the darkness of the eternal cave, where the old dies and then is born again. This is a place where time is forgotten and the seasons seize their dance and stand still, as if in a temporary repose. You must cross the river now, honoring and respecting this transition, for it's time to say goodbye to your old ways of navigating your world. Don't be afraid. You've come to the edge of the river because you're ready. You're ready to let go of what doesn't serve you and all the ways in which you've kept yourself from truly living. Intimacy requires vulnerability and truth. Can you strip away the masks and the barriers of false strength to discover what you're really made of? Step in the boat waiting for you. Let it carry you the cave where the shadows are waiting to be illuminated so you can be born in Gan into the world without denial or artifice. Making the crossing is a beautiful, powerful act of the highest love. Can I ask you something here, Mary? Um, with yes, this- ma'am. With this full moon in cancer and just listening to this and, and this idea of can you strip away the masks and the barriers of false strength to discover who you're, what you're really made of and this idea of going into the eternal cave, that is essentially kind of very much like the crab, you know, like the the house, the, the, the cancer um, where, you, you know, you wear, <laughs> your, you carry your house wherever you go. Um, and this idea that perhaps with the with this full moon as it's illuminating and it's culminating and possibly letting go, right, as we all do around full moons, that there's a part of our personal selves or something that um, maybe has been false that we're really ready to let go and um, and embrace again, like this newer truer version of um, who we really are. Absolutely. We, we're becoming, we become aware. It's like Alice in the looking glass or, or when you look at uh, Snow White, when the queen of the forest, which is a beautiful queen, looks into the mirror and says, mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the fairest of them all? And she's got this Oracle mirror and the Oracle says, Oh, you're so beautiful. My queen. However, something new, which is actually an inner child version of herself wanting to emerge. When you read the the mythical legends of Snow White, something new has entered the forest. Well, Snow White is innocent and, you know, she's not there to fight with the original Capricornian queen of the forest, you know, but the queen of the forest gets threatened. So our ego, our, you know, you hear an old statement of like, I've grown accustomed to your face. You know, it's like we have to face some pretty challenging things here in earth school and solstice and Capricorn and the winter solstice certainly favors the earth element in our chart where you have Capricorn is highly important right now. And we've got mercury retrograding 
first on 1213 and Capricorn and backing up into the here's the archer with the bow Sagittarius saying aim higher aim higher don't try to aim the arrow don't release the arrow just to the 3d earth targets or for you know hunting or no aim the arrow up aim it up you know and seek a new healing that's the centaurs of of the Sagitt that's why it's half man half human half horse right there at the navel at the uh, the, uh, the reproductive area, it's half man, half horse is the sign of Sagittarius. And so the centaurs were all about healing. And until we can stop allowing abuses and or stop making excuses about the parts of ourselves that, like a crab, we're holding on to because sometimes we think that we feel secure or there's security in in a crazy, you know, multidimensional world around us spinning around like a roller coaster all the time. It's just like, oh my God, I need something familiar. I need something traditional. I need, where is the stability in our life? So we begin to search and grab tighter onto the things that were the way we our coping mechanisms, the way that we coped when we thought there was the monster under the bed or the scary person in the closet or how we were able to surpass and build levels of confidence within ourselves when our our parents both latchkey kids that generation in the 80s they just they had to adapt because both parents were working and so you were you were either home alone latchkey hence the latchkey you came home alone from school and there might have been food prepared but you didn't have as much each 10-year block of the 70s the 80s the 90s uh, from 2000 to 2010 and where we are now these 10-year um celestial cycles and these and these timelines of what was in in fashion and what was in in music and you know disco goth the new age uh, you know rave and all this kind of stuff what was in was the tradition of that time for those people being born at that certain time and place so we tend to think that just because we it rose to the occasion to give us a way out or a coping mechanism we tend to kind of assume in our ego that, oh, it must be always good then. I'm always going to do, I always act that way when I fall in love and I always act that way when I'm scared. And I always tend to do that in the way I express my anger. And we come to learn that sometimes our anger is self-destructive or our anger can be motivational. So Capricorn time every year, and of course, as Nicole and I point out, there's a different tarot card every year for the, the the current synchronistic message. There's different alignments like, you know, we went into solstice with the moon in Aries, and then it went from Aries zooming over to our full moon exact on December 26, as we have the full moon rise and its home sign of Cancer the Crab. But prior to the 26th of December, when we're going over this this Christmas thing, there's a tug of war. And the tug of war, when we've got a Yule tide in Aries, cardinal sign, versus a full moon in the sign of Cancer, is those relatives, those traditional things that we eat on a Thanksgiving or an Easter or a Christmas. It's like, okay, I'm the one that makes the desserts, or boy, I really look forward to that ham or that turkey or whatever it is, depending on where you were born and where you grew up. Even though there might have been dissent and bickering or mind games or manipulatory tactics going on in your household with your family of origin, the cranberry sauce was still there. <laughs> the, the great pizza, the desserts that aunt so-and-so or the, the, the certain thing that uncle so-and-so that went hunting brought to the, t I mean, there's some things that kind of anchored in on that and they become like Oracle cards. It's just like, there's people that easily will say, I can't stand cranberry sauce on Thanksgiving. Get, well then don't eat it. It can be there. But just don't partake. So mm -hmm. Capricorn reminds us to, it, I call this season, Capricorn to me, because it is ruled by Saturn, 2024 is going to be an eight year. It's an affinity year. And the Chinese astrology, it's going to be the wood dragon. So we have more of that, instead of it just being a sky dragon, we have it being a dragon on the earth. So we're looking at where can we use the fire of the dragon to purge and cleanse and ascend like a phoenix away from the part of us from our stories our our life story our his or her story of what influenced us 
good or bad, easy or difficult, plus or minus to where you and I are listening to this in December of 2023. And nobody can make the decision to slip out of that identity, that mask, that persona, the archetypes that we chose to be comfortable for us up until this point. And I believe as we, since we had the strongest full moon of 2023 happening and, and wants to be soft, wants to be hugged, wants to be nurtured, wants to be loyal, wants to have dedication, sign of cancer as the moon and Capricorn going, you can rely on me. Yeah, my ambition is you. My ambition is that it's a win-win. My ambition is that I'm the patriarch. I'm the warrior. I'm the protector. I'm the, I'm the CEO. I'm the decision maker. And if I choose you as my significant other, yes, I will put a crown and an armor and a sword and a shield over you. And it's even in like when you go into the Psalms, when you go into Psalms 511, it talks about favor and it talks about God speaking that he will exalt you and he will place favor. God's favor will surround you like a shield. If you go into Genesis 12, 2 and start reading, it talks about from Abraham, the abundant increases of supernatural favor. So my guide said to me this year, different than last year, and it'll be a, a different type of swan song and, and a revelation to where we can rise up away from the old self and that which drags us down and said is letting us ascend. They said this is a celestial sacred cycle of soul seeding. And they told me that although we read and although we vision and although we dream, and we certainly think, and most of us aren't willing to admit that no matter what story we're hearing or seminar we're attending or journey we're taking, we tend to bring it back to, and we get stuck on, on just look at your social media post on how you view it through the filters of you. And as I said to Nicole, sometimes on the musical scale of do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do, we get stuck at me, 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 me. And so we don't realize how much that we're initiating as disciples of light and truth, we're already throwing a filter on a new concept at that seminar in your meditation with your dreams of what, what do I feel about that? How does that affect me? So it's all right for us to allow ourselves, whatever you anchor into is holy, as sacred, whether it's great spirit, great mystery, almighty I am forces, Christ frequencies, you know, whether you're Buddhist or this or that, if it's proved itself to be in a concert of responding energy and frequency to you, like the Holy Ghost never fails me. When I call on the Almighty Am or I call on the Holy Ghost, boom, it's there. Now, I have found over the last three years, particularly back when I was like a child, cancer is the child, Capricorn is the protector, whether it's your parents or your grandparents or the uncle or the aunt or the, or the particular principal at school or whatever. So I have found that no matter how much I would meditate or read the Bible or quote the, when I speak it, when I speak it, when you, when you, and this is big, um, it sounds simple, but it's big when you put it into motion, how we are speaking is how we are literally as artists, as soul artists, casting the energy into manifestation and here's what my guides came up with it worked for me not pushing on anybody they said okay you arrive on earth school as spirit opinions differ on where you came from who's in charge blah 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 but you arrive as spirit you are spirit and many cultures teach that when you leave this body it's just like taking a glove off you the native peoples call it you slip your skin but you're viable and you still have frequencies and mind and all, okay, is, and then there's all kinds of beliefs about how you journey the Egyptian book of the dead versus traditional Christianity. So when you, so the spirit, the sacred spirit is what's breathing you. All right. So it's the gift of breath. You know, like we all, if you've ever attended and sat with someone when they're dying or an animal, you know, and in the South, sometimes we call it, they gave up the ghost. So when I'm holding an animal, that's getting ready to pass where I've sat with many people when their family couldn't sit with them. I'm, I can be a death doula because I got a bunch of Scorpio on my chart and, and, and I know how empowering and how beautiful it is to be that person 
to really be there for a person that's getting ready to leave Earth. It's just huge. It's like people that love to attend a birth. Not so much me. I'm good with the death thing, but I don't need to go see somebody give birth. I mean, I know it's great, but that's just not me. Everybody's got a preference. But when you cast words and become aware, even if you just read it, even if you wrote it, which engages the subconscious and the conscious, but when you say it, and you don't have to yell it, you can whisper it, you are blending your sound voice frequencies with not only the spirit that has been afforded you in this body temple, but you are coalescing it. You become in concert with the mysteries, the great spirit, the spirit, the essence of everything around you. Because when I breathe, if I'm inhaling and exhaling, I'm one with the atmosphere around me. So if I add the magical charge of a deliberate intention to cast a soul seed and say, I now am one with. I now allow the crown of glory, the supernatural favor. Thank you. Glory and grace frequencies. Thank you. Almighty I am forces. Thank you for my favor, for my prosperity of wellness. Thank you for all the people that have entered my life in the year of our Lord of 2023. Thank you right now in the holiday of Christmas, Christmas. Thank you right now for all the people that serve their purpose in my life. Thank you for their seeds of light, even if they're no longer with me on the earth or in my social course of, of hanging out. Thank you. As I now bless at the end of 2023, as it's measured, I now cast favor into 2024. I allow the infinity of what, how 2024 adds up to an eight. I allow the infinity I will be authentic and I will walk forward with boots of authenticity, with intention of kindness. I will set the boundaries because that's a part of kindness, of being better to myself, not saying yes when my inner spirit and my psychology of self is going, no, no, no. So I will be bold. I will have the strength to say, we're going to agree to disagree. That's not my circus. Enjoy your monkeys or no, I'm out. Just because I don't want to do that, I'm not drawn to that. Or yes, I will support you in that. So we learn not to overcommit. So it isn't just when Mercury's retrograde or Chiron, you know, and you know, and and North Node or an Air. No, we've got eclipses coming up, and Aries and Libra primarily. One slips in in Pisces. The the nodal axis, the eclipses, as we come into 2024, spring is huge in 2024, and we've got the Aries Libra axis. So right now. The cardinal energies as we end 2023 and go into the first month of 2024, you want to locate what house and if you have any planets around that four degrees of the cardinal signs of Aries, Libra, Cancer, Capricorn, this full moon's between the fourth and fifth degree of the cardinal signs of the eternal mother, Cancer the Crab, Mother Ocean, and then you've got Capricorn, which is the peak of the mountain. The other tarot card that came to mind um, was the, the number zero in the major arcana known as the fool, because the fool is kind of like Dorothy and the Wizard of Oz. It's a youth and he goes to the edge of a cliff. He's on the precipice of the cliff, high up, high up. He has his loyal, in the Rider Waite deck anyway, his loyal white dog is just dancing and rearing up on its, it's just on its hind legs and he's rearing up with joy. The vision quest of the youth on the fool card in the tarot has a little knapsack. And some of the older Rider Wake artistic decks, like the ones uh, from the artist Pamela Coleman Smith, has the all seeing eye on that knapsack. But he has hardly any possessions. The clothes on his back, he's got a long pole, which could be a walking stick, but just a little knapsack, like it looks like a little cloth knapsack that you and I nowadays will call our luggage that we would want to board or take on board. And the dogs jump. They're all excited for the journey, but he literally has his foot on the sharp edge of the precipice of a mountain on high and a cliff, if you will. And he's got the panoramic view. The dog doesn't care. The dog just wants to be with him. That's dogs. You know, dog is God spell backwards. You know, so the dog's like, hi, just want to be with you. I'll take the chance. If it stinks, if we fall or whatever, we go into danger. I just want to be with you. So it's that boldness. We come out of Sagittarius, the need to explore, to adventure, and to vision quest into the practical way that we're going to be able to move forward 
and the supplies we need. Do we need water? Do we need shelter? Do we know how to build a fire if we get out in the wilderness? So Capricorn's about what are the tools of the trade to be able to accomplish this goal? Every year when we go through Capricorn season and Mars is in Sagittarius, it'll next go into Capricorn. Mars is our fuel. So right now we have this, why not? But when we get the sun in Mars, we're going to get, you know, Mercury at Kazemi with the sun. You know, that's going to be happening as they join forces. We're going to have like on the 27th through the 28th, the sun in Capricorn is going to be in a marvelous uh, energetic dance with Jupiter and Taurus. It's very fortunate that same day, Mercury and Sagittarius will join Mars in Sagittarius over December 28th. Mars in Sagittarius is going to square Neptune. So on the 29th, Venus pops into Sagittarius. On January the 5th, Mars will go into Capricorn. These are important dates. Now Christmas, we have this waxing full moon. Christmas had Venus in Scorpio. She's not well-placed in Scorpio, but she's mysterious and she's intriguing. And she can. Venus allows us to stumble on psychological secrets that serve us very well, both psychological secrets that until this time, we didn't recognize that we were doing, whether it's covert, manipulative, or passive aggressive. Venus and Scorpio will show you your psychological tools. And over the 24th, 25th, 26th, she's forming a very dynamic, helpful, teaching, celestial dynamic because she's trining Neptune in Pisces. So from the oceanic depths of a cancer, the crab lives at the beach, full moon. Venus in the water sign, like Cancer and like Pisces, is giving a celestial kiss to the ruler of the depths of our spirit, the depths and the needs of our soul, Neptune, a.k.a. Poseidon, that rules the seas, S-E-A-S-E-E. -E -E. So we have such a, and I've not heard a lot of astrologers talking about this, I can't tell you how moving energetically this is that we are with the uh, christmas eve christmas day and as this full moon rises and waxes at full strength it's a peaceful full moon we've got venus and scorpio kissing meeting up with in in the most extreme harmony called a trine which is a symbol of like a pyramid it's ascending neptune in pisces so go back six months go back to when we had our new moon our new moon that happened in the sign of cancer. I'll give you that date. But don't just look at the date. Look at that week of we, when we had the, the new moon at 24 degrees of cancer happened over July 15th, 16th, 17th in 2023. So you don't have to do it tonight as you're listening to this with Nicole. You need to pay attention to Nicole and look at the imagery of the card and that we are at a crossing. We are at a crossroads. We are no longer willing through the strength of Capricorn, and, the, and we know that love is a frequency that wins, but we have to know the worthiness of love within ourselves. You, you, if you don't love yourself, truly, and I'm not talking about Machiavellian, narcissistic, sociopathic, it's all about me, kiss my grits. I'm talking about the higher frequencies, higher love, like Steve Winwood's song, higher love, bring me a higher love. If you know that loving yourself through a difficult time Choosing to get better, not bitter, when someone else is a betrayer or attempts to be hurtful and, and, and cause you to go crossways with your energy or, or to sideways with the energy that you know is true for you and that you know beyond your culture, your race, your biology, that this is when my soul says, yes, Nicole, yes, Mary, lean into this. You know the truth. Don't let any mortal distract you from mm -hmm. your soul wisdom. So during Capricorn season, ironically, if you work with the signs and you work with the stories, you know, Capricorn is the goat that has the dolphin tail. So the dolphin tail is kind of like a little Pisces energy. And so we've got the sun in Capricorn and we've got Saturn and Neptune in the sign of the dolphin in the sign of all the myrrh creatures of the ocean. And so what's happening is the moon in Cancer certainly gets along with Venus and Scorpio and these Piscean, Poseidon fish planets. You know, even Christ in, in, in the story as it goes tells the disciples when he's at the seashore, go, I make you fishers of men, go. 
So the fish of truth, the seeing. So he's at the seaside showing that. We have a lot of water symbology in the Bible. When Moses parts the Red Sea and the waves, you know, divide and back off. So the oceans of emotions, that's what, to me, emotion, I always tie it back to the sign of cancer, whether it's a full moon or a transit or not. To me, emotion is two words that come up in a mystical uh, prescription for me. It's energy, which is the E of emotion. So I do E dash motion. So whatever emotions and feelings I'm going to allow to take motion over my thoughts and my ego and my psyche soul and what I, and what I receive back, however the energies are set into motion of feelings is where, whether, where I better get real quick on being aware of what's going on. I need to be very aware. I need to stay awakened or I need to be aware of my own inability to see it for what it is, because then I could become manipulative or I could become enabling for fear of rejection because that's the fear of cancer and Pisces mm -hmm. don't reject me. They can get too needy. They need approval. Just they don't want you to leave because oh, it may not be everything I want, but at least I've known them for 15 years. No, we fight a lot and I really don't want to split the money. I really don't, don't want to go the disruptive thing of dividing the bank accounts or selling the house. No, it's not what I can't tell you how many times I've heard that in dealing with clients. That's really not what I want at all. But, you know, at this stage of the game, I mean, it's what I've got better than anything I might find out there. Lots of people have said that to me, male, female, old, and young. They're more afraid of what might be out there in the unknown, unexplored territories, the treasure map. They're yeah. more afraid to take the journey on the treasure map than, they're, than they, I mean, they're actually looking full force and admitting that they're not compatible, living in that town, working at that job, staying with that person. Oh, they've cheated on me. They stole my money. They lied to me. Why are you accepting that? as your treasure. And I'm saying that to you, not blaming them. I'm talking to you because ultimately I'm responsible if I stay in toxic situations, no matter what it is. I mean, there's players in our life on the, on the theater and this, in the, in the center stage of my theater of my life experience, but I ultimately have to choose if it's toxic or not. And mm -hmm. that's what a Capricorn moon will say to you. You have to work within your established structures beliefs where you feel comfortable knowing the strengths of your mind the strengths of your ego and your personality you want to better understand and respect your limits capricorn saturn limits this is as far as i'll go that's my non-negotiable and if we can start prepping at this early point of capricorn saying to ourselves okay my new discipline until i get to the third week of january 2024 is that i'm going to better adhere do simple rules. I'm going to draw clear boundaries. I'm going to develop a deeper appreciation for the structure, my foundation, what's in order in my life and what's taking control in my life. If I just stay diligent and disciplined about completing my goals, my simple everyday tasks and my responsibilities, Capricorn Saturn's all about your responsibilities and your goals. So yeah. when we're in Capricorn and in the Capricorn area of your chart, what house it is and any planets in Capricorn, and we have transits right now going through there, you have the power and the ability right now to identify what's wrong, what's a disturbance in your spirit, and to determine what actions to take. But even though Mercury's retrograde, it's time to materialize your plans. It's time to study a little deeper. It's time to reset. It's going to require cooperation, organization, authority, your own discipline, and you're going to have to take responsibility. These are the workable, mystical acumen tools of the sign of Capricorn, and it helps you. This is the strategy and, and the modus operandi that it helps us to achieve the desired outcome. But it's imperative, and I'll finish on this, it's imperative to consider that if your vision is solely for personal gain, it won't last long. These mm -hmm. aspirations have to be for the greater good. Pluto's going into Aquarius, you know, in the early part of 2024. Ambition, practicality, and accomplishment can be commendable, but they're just tools for you to accomplish a goal. It's not the ultimate goal itself to go, nah, 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 I won. Yeah, no. 
Okay. So I want to get into the signs, like the go sign yes, by sign. But before we do, I just really want to kind of hone it back into this full moon in cancer. Cause we've talked a lot about a lot of things here. So mm-hmm. from your perspective, can we just kind of break down this full moon in cancer, what it's kind of bringing up for us and how obviously, uh, you know, th- it's a, it's a really nice full moon because we've got the trying to like Saturn, it. we've got Jupiter trining the sun. And then of course they're creating these beautiful sextiles. So, um, but it's tradition, it's tradition. So maybe we can word it like this. Cancer is the Madonna, the mother. So, I mean, even when you, when you research the word Bethlehem, it means the bread, the bread of life. So they went to Bethlehem and Mary, the virgin, the Virgo, that she's Virgo is when we're separating the wheat from the sheath, it's harvest time. So we've come past harvest, which was our, our autumnal equinox. So the next power point in the great turning of the wheel is solstice, winter solstice in the Northern Hemisphere. So it's saying, if you are the nurturing mother, as a nurturing mother, whether you have children or not, physical children or not, or pets or not, as a mother, how would you give birth to this? How would you carry it to its fruition? So cancer is more the womb of life. It has to do with the seeds of of it's, it's going to grow. I mean, summer is the growing season on the medicine wheel. So cancer full moon is the moon is round. The, the sky is bright. It's the mother sign going, I'm going to give birth to my desires and I'm going to give birth and I'm going to protect this vision. The sun's in Capricorn going, and I'll show you the way I'll be right by you as you go through this birthing experience. So the birthing seeds were back at the new moon of mid-July of 2023, this is the moon that says, now, as your mother, you know, Mother Earth, Grandmother Moon, yeah, so the the moon, Grandmother Moon is saying to us, now I must show you, because you've gone through the birth, now I must show you what you need to let go of. I mean, a literal birth, they have to do something with the placenta, Mm -hmm. which is all the nutrients that helped grow the, the seed of the creature. So, cancer and and it's the fluids of the body so this moon is saying there is a mystical birth so whether you look at just the traditions of christmas and the mystical birth of the christ consciousness or you look at this is a time of some of the strongest traditions in the world in europe in the world the middle east you know what what is it that represents new life and at christmas it's the birth of the savior so it has a lot to do with and and what makes me feel at home when I hang out with Nicole, I can be myself. She's authentic. I'm authentic. We have no war between us because we have no envy or avarice or greed or competition. So these are the treasures in your life. When you meet up with these people that you can work with or have a latte or a a toast of champagne as you're turning the page into a new year, these are the people that you want to align yourself with, you know, because Nicole's going to tell it like it is. She's going to be a soul life coach that says, okay, no judgment, but you seem a little stuck here. Do you feel it? When I work with clients, I'll say, how long have you been holding on to this? So cancer, this full moon in cancer, what do we need to loosen our grip on? Mm. What's We're holding tight, Nicole, and lovely yeah. audience, but mm. where do we need to let go? Because our grip, our fear of change. I don't want to let go. I want to make sure I have the new thing before I let go. And that's, that's equivalent to you walking up to a door, like you're coming into an office building and you open up the main door because it's unlocked because it's off, you know, it's open for business and you go into the rest. You got to walk through the door. You can't yeah. just stay there with your foot propping the door open. So these are new doors. This is a new shell for the hermit crab. This is, it, it really is. If you look at Pinocchio, I like to do lyrics of songs. So you look at Silent Night, Away in a Manger, We Three Kings. But if you look back at Disney's Pinocchio, the theme song of Pinocchio, and I jotted these down, can be taken as as the greatest star, the brightest star of the three kings in Orion's belt. When you wish upon a star, makes no difference who you are. Anything your heart desires will come to you. If your heart is in your dreams, No request is too extreme. When you wish upon a star, as dreamers do, fate is kind. She brings to those who love the sweet fulfillment of their secret longing. 
like a bolt out of the blue. Fate steps in, sees you through. When you wish upon a star, your dreams come true. That's serious. That's the turning of the page of Capricorn ending this year and going into the new year. And the very tradition of what's your New Year's goals, what's your goals, what's your New Year's resolutions, that's Capricorn. That's all about Capricorn. Okay, I'm going to smoke less. I'm going to eat better. I'm going to lose weight. I'm going to gain weight. I'm going to do better with my, that's Capricorn. What disciplines are we beginning to think, you know, I really could do better with that one, but let's do it without abuse, self-abuse or making an excuse. Yeah, I feel, I feel that very strongly. And I can see that so many people, so many of us, myself included, um, are really struggling to, uh, there, you're right. We do need to loosen our grip on, uh, things that are not allowing for the change that needs to come in to come in. And Saturn and Pisces, the very uh, spiritually grounded uh, wisdom uh, coming yep. through the teachings to say, hey, uh, if you want your dreams to come true, you're going to have to get serious about change. And this mystical birth that you're talking about, I I, I really feel it like there's this, the the it's almost like creating a new, even though this is a full moon, it's like almost like creating a new home version of yourself. Um, yeah. That Cancer is the sign of the home and mm-hmm. the family. And, and, and this moon is very well aligned, what you're talking about. But there's an encourage, you know, encouragement is a power. And yeah. like you did a great wordplay when you said when we get serious. And I'm like, oh, look at the phonetics of that. This dog star serious that we're talking oh, about, yeah. the brightest star yeah. is S-I-R-I-U-S. And if you look at the word serious, when we get serious and dedicated about something, it's S-E-R-I-O-U-S. So serious, the great bright star of this time frame of the ending of 2023 is what are you willing to loosen your grip on and get serious, aligned with serious, which the pyramids are said to align with that, the, the heliactical a rising of Sirius is when the Nile starts to flow backwards. And that's when we get back into that mid-June type of thing mm-hmm. in a different hemisphere. So it's Egypt, it's the pyramids, it's alignments like Stonehenge at Solstice. We've all heard about that, how people gather at Stonehenge, the Scots, the Gaelic, the Irish, and, and their customs. But go back to the Wizard of Oz. What is it that you brought forth with all the ups and downs and the ocean high tides and low tides flood zones and working to keep your head above water. What did you come out of all that childhood theater with? That's your anchor. That's your compass. That's your faith. That's your due diligence to go. I can rise above it. I will move forward from it. It doesn't have a grip on me anymore. It cannot pull me down underwater. I will move forward. So let's look at what attempted to derail us or hold us back from our origins of the foundation of our families and our home, because this is where our roots were. And we need to disengage and loosen our grip on not what the actions of others were to us, but also our own chosen misperceptions. Because we've got a square between Venus going into Sagittarius, Mars in Sagittarius, Mercury retrograde in the mix, a misplaced word can spoil the merriment. On the positive side, this Mars in Sagittarius, Neptune, and Pisces connection helps us to to birth from within us. A 90 degree of square is a lesson we need to learn from within ourselves. And opposition's coming Mm. at us from outside. So the 90 degree is what do we need to let go of within ourselves? The 180 degree, you know, the opposition, six months away, six signs away is saying, okay, we're going to send you someone that becomes a life coach or a teacher that will help you, whether they have to shake the roots of your tree or just help you have an aha epiphany moment. So we have to be inclined to set our egos aside for the sake of the collective good, for the collective rising up of our spirit and a trine between the sun in Capricorn and Jupiter in Taurus is saying the magnanimity, the, the, the manifestation, the magnificence, our ability to be magnanimous in our personal belief is if we stay grounded. We have to do tangible things. Take a walk in nature, light a candle over Christmas, and as you yeah. go into the new year, and write down on a piece of paper three things 
that you're going to let go of. You're not going to let that have a grip on you and just burn it in a nice little water bowl and then write down three things that you're going to allow to manifest with supernatural favor, the crowning glory of the almighty forces as you go into 2024. It's okay for you to claim it. It's okay. I just before we get into the uh, into the all signs, I think that what I really feel, especially just even after you were talking about this, the Mercury Mars going to be squaring off with Neptune during this, um, this full moon in cancer is also kind of highlighting, all right, what illusions are you holding within your belief system that you're very, you're reactionary, right? Mars, um, mm-hmm. that you maybe need to revisit, especially now with Mercury retrograding, um, mm-hmm. in Sagittarius, really looking at mm-hmm. our beliefs, like you were talking about at the beginning, like what beliefs are you holding on to that cause you to be reactionary to particular illusions that might be dissolving themselves to show you lifting the veil of how perhaps you might be in your own way by again, holding on to something that really needs to be let go. Well, it's a shedding. Cancer Mm -hmm. is a shedding emotionally. You know, Virgo, it could be more practical. Capricorn, it's responsibilities. But this is a shedding. Mm -hmm. It's a shedding of emotional impairments or emotional insecurities. So Mm -hmm. it's it's just look at it. Don't be threatened by it. Look at how, you know, I'm telling you, in nature, a hermit crab, maybe if you've ever had a little terrarium and you had a hermit crab, they can die. They, They stay in that shell. You have to go get a bigger shell and it, it'll look at it, it'll touch it, and it'll go right back into the shell that's getting too tight. And if you don't, if you have a hermit crab and you don't get it a bigger shell as it grows, it just dies in there. I mean, it's so, it, it won't bring its vulnerable self out. So when, when you deal with crabs, the shelter, same with the tortoise, you know, a turtle gets in water, a tortoise is land. So the tortoise has the hard shell. And what does the tortoise do when you come upon them? When you see them in the mountains, they go, whoosh. And they close that shell. It's just like front door, back door closed. But then when they, and, and it's one of the symbols of the 13 Native American cycles of a full moon. Uh, you know, they, they call, you know, they call Earth Turtle Island because mm-hmm. The, mm-hmm. The, the different indenta- indentations on the turtle's shell has to do with the different types of moons, the way that that culture measures it. So I would look at if you were born Catholic, if you came in very staunch Judaic, if you're you know, if you're Native American, if you're Buddhist, or if you went into feng shui, or you really like Chinese traditional medicine, or you went into Ayurvedic and the Hindu Sikh India type of teachings, you know, like some of the, look at the, the books that have inspired you since your youth. Like I love Rumi, you know, and I love Khalil Gibran, and I love Krishna. Mur- I found that I was leaning a lot into the Hindu cultures. You know, I found that I really got inspiration from the way that they poetically wrote things, you know, and, and, um, uh, and, and then I found that, that in the Native Americans. So it's okay to look at, wow, that's interesting. What songs come up in my mind? Because kids hum and sing and dance and play. They hum on the, on the McDonald's playground or on the gymnastics thing. They have like songs that influence them. And we all had songs that caught our attention in that, in that 10 year span of when we hit preteen all the way up to mid adult. So what songs really held on to you. And I would say like um, Cat Stevens Moonshadow and Dreamweaver by Gary Wright, all for this Cancerian moon and, and everything to do with a dream within a dream and, and, and how we actually are weavers of our dreams. We're actually like a spider weaving the web, the intricate, beautiful, sacred geometry of not as a predator, but what we want to see spin into our web. Like why does the spider choose that that location to spin its web and there's different spiders for different seasons of the year whether it's spring or summer for the, the writer spiders don't come out until autumn and they don't hurt anybody but they but these they're big and they do these really pretty webs and they've got the autumn colors and they and they tear them down every day not on, uh, other spiders don't they tear them down every day i mean i love what we call in the south here granddaddy long legs i love those spiders i did not know <laughs> that that's the most poisonous spider that there is but it can't hurt us as humans because its mouth's too little. But oh, it can gosh, put us up really? Bad. They're poisonous? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what I, I thought. Oh, I didn't know Grand oh, wow. was the most poisonous. I, those and, but, were the ones it, I was put, super friendly with. I like with. them. Yeah. Me too. Oh, they'll run around your arm and I save them all the time. You know, and they're like, run, like ah, save me. But, but, I, but they're, apparently they put quite the whoop ass 
on oh. whatever it is they want to attack, but they don't do it to us. Their mouth can't bite us. So yes. in the signs, certainly, first I want to say out of all 12 signs, the two signs with this full moon, winter solstice, yuletide, into this moon all the way in to the 26th, because remember on the 25th and 26th, this full moon in Cancer is exactly aligned with the brightest star Sirius, the dog star. So look all that up on your legends and everything. And I put that on some of my Facebook pages about the whole Magi and Sirius and the Orion. And you can go to Farmer's Almanac and find that kind of stuff. But if you're a Cancer Capricorn, you're absolutely, absolutely in the spotlight. The next new moon over the 10th, 11th, 12th, and that genre there, the days of, of remembering, especially 111, that's going to be the Capricorn new moon. So what we're letting go of now and we can actually discipline Capricorn ourselves to let go of that or them or this that really is a hindrance. It's holding us back. It's, it's the tether on our ankle, and we keep making excuses for the abuses, but we really need to let it go and get unhooked, turn a key, move forward. The, the opening door is January 10th, 11th, and 12th of 2024. That's when you'll start to see the overarching beginnings and where the strengths of your convictions are starting to reward you. So with this full moon and the sign of cancer and the sun in Capricorn, the, the, the Capricorn energy with the full moon in cancer is hitting cancer in, it, it's a first house full moon, but that's really like a three day shedding of psychological and emotional energies. The actual Capricorn energy, that's gonna go for the 29, 30 degrees that started on winter solstice and goes forward until January 20th of 24. The Cancer Sun in rising, it's your relationships, it's your SOs, your significant others. What type? This full moon is highlighting where are you done with that former uh, predictable, habitual self that you show up in your intimate relationships or how you are as a husband or a wife or a parent. I mean, it's like there's something that needs to be reset, recalibrated at the full moon. But your Capricorn allows us to establish structure. So if you're a Cancer Sun Moon Rising or Capricorn Sun Moon Rising, it has to do with how you're relating and, especially Capricorn, are you trusting what's coming towards you? Like if you're Capricorn, you're the recipient of someone's compliments or someone's interest or someone's disdain or someone saying, we need to sit down and discuss this. I want to communicate with you about this. We need to revisit this and we've got some corrections to do. Instead of getting butt hurt or your feelings all entangled and twisted up and braided, if you're a Cancer or a Capricorn, go good. Yes, go first. I want to hear your ideas. I'm all in to creatively learn about what is a win-win between you and I, whether that's work, whether that's your parents. Now, Keeping in mind, if someone's stuck, be it you or them, if they're stuck, they're going to be more into blame. If you do this and you do that, if you can keep the conversation with, okay, that's your perception of what I do. I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm not saying you're right. But what then would be your solution of how we can correct the dynamics of this relationship. I'm interested in that. I'm interested in not so much what we've done or not done in the past, but what, what, what can we move forward with in this new year? And I really feel that's a central orbit that's hitting both Cancer and Capricorn because we've got, remember, we've got Venus shifting into Capricorn. Mars is going to go into Capricorn. So we can't talk about this Cancer full moon without looking at what's on the horizon as, as the sun rising on the new year of 2024. So yeah, as a Cancer, as a Capricorn, you're in the spotlight and it's about who and what is working and who or what you and I as a Cancer or a Capricorn in those areas and those signs in our chart could be working some new strategies into. The Capricorn's strategic. It's strategic. It goes to the top. It looks at the panoramic view of the mountain. So we're the goat climbing up the mountain and we've got the dolphin's tail and we can flip out of the water like a dolphin can and we can see both heaven and earth. If you've got a Leo predominance, a Leo sun in rising, the Capricorn energy is talking to you about your health. Now the Cancer full moon, it's in the sign before you. It's next month, 
the full moon will be in Leo. So a Cancer full moon for Leo, they're into the somber, the silent night, the oh holy night, the I don't want to do a lot of public things. When you've got a 12th house full moon and the moon is strongest in the sign of Cancer, strongest. So no matter what our signs are, and even though the moon gets full on all 12 signs in a year, Cancer is its home base. So think of yourself like you're in a canoe or you're on a boat. So we've got the water underneath us, even though we've got the canoe or the boat, you know, uh, you know, protecting our body temple. So with Leo right now, it's thinking about the past, your elders, the people that are no longer on the earth plane, they've slipped their skin into spirit. It's your culture, your family, the memories of the traditions are stirred up. We're looking back. And I, and I felt for Leo that they were, for some reason, I felt, I don't know, I can't even tell you what it is astrologically because it was a psychic thing that came. Uh, they said, tell Leo to look back to the main themes of 2014 and 2015, those years. Don't have an answer for you. That's what came and I don't question spirit. And if you're um, a Virgo, the full moon is hitting your 11th house. I really like with Saturn being in the opposite sign of Virgo and Neptune has been trekking around in Pisces, that Virgos have really had to have their eyes opened and who and what is truly authentic in their business and their intimate partnerships. And so it's been a long-term process for you Virgos to be able to move on and to be able to let go because Virgos are much more emotionally charged in the inside of them, the psychology of them, the, you know, they don't like, they see showing their tenderness as a weakness. Sometimes Capricorn can do that. But the Capricorn energy is allowing you to lean in and be empowered by self-expression to invite more joy instead of always being of service to other people or for you shadowy Virgos expecting everybody to serve your ass because that you, I've known Virgos that can be quite pompous So they're because of their insecurity of not fitting in. So with Virgo, I would say you're creating now with purpose. You've got your heart involved. And when your heart's involved, your generosity cannot be taken advantage of. Because I believe our soul star likes to hang out between the heart chakra and the crown chakra, the third eye and the crown chakra. And so when our three chakras of supernatural favor, the heart, the third eye, and the crown chakra go, mm -mm, they start making that noise of a dolphin, you know, eh, 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 you know, and our ego or our need to be approved of doesn't listen to that inner clarion call, that's when we get in trouble. That's when we get taken advantage of. That's when perhaps our expectations we're giving with a string attached to it. I'll do this. I can make it happen. I'll invite you here. I'll pay for this. I'll make it happen. Yeah. And then we don't want to admit that we're still stuck on the scale of me, 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 that we expect them to respect the fact that we made something happen for them. And even if we're the most generous and we don't have a string attached, it still can be very shocking when we see that guy or that girl just be totally into you owe my ass. And it's like, oh, pump your brakes and back your truck up. No, no, you're going to find out real quick. I'm exiting. You don't get to know me. I didn't owe you shit. I chose to be kind to you. I chose to be a benefactor. But if you're going to come back and take and slap and be disrespectful, watch this. You don't get to have me. You don't get to know me. Bye-bye now. And you have to be able to set those Capricornian boundaries. And if you're a Libra, that's going on. If you've got strong Libra in your chart, that's going on within the family rhythm, the traditions, the home base, our neighbors being too nosy, our, our uh, the quote uh, BFFs getting a little too invasive or controlling with you because Libra wants to try to negotiate with everybody. So Libras, you need to be building a, a, a stable and a cozy nest that meets your needs. Like you don't need to hear somebody's criticisms of your innate creativity and your abilities. You know, Libra is artistic. And whether that's interior decorating or building or taking a broken down shack or trailer and, and totally revising it and making it a beautiful vortex that's worth a lot more money and has a lot more beauty and serenity, beauty in and of itself is a very powerful psychic and psychological energy. So Libras are wanting to be left alone by energy vampires and they just want to be cut loose like a wild horse in a pasture 
and be able to just let their creativity soar. So Libra, loosen the grip on what voices you're listening to. You can't do that. Who do you think you are? That's going to cost too much money. That can't be. You need to shutter that out. And you need to start calling for supernatural favor. And as you start to affirm and you start to blend your spirituality, whatever that is, with your actual life force breath, that's the same thing as me going to ceremony and beating the drum or I'm doing Tibetan bells or healing bells or sound healing of any kind whatsoever to enliven your chakras, your energy centers. So what we are saying in this Capricorn period lights up at summer solstice of 2024. If you're a Scorpio, this has got to do with um, the dynamics of how you communicate. It's your ninth house full moon. So it's the, the sacred sword, the shields, the armor of spirit. Um, it's it, For Scorpios, it's arriving and emboldening Scorpios to, to be able to absolutely with unabandoned faith allow the empowerment in the enlightenment of the inner vision, the inner seeing. Um, the sun in Capricorn is the third house. So it's your mental patterns, your psychological patterns, your ability to communicate from your higher self to your child self or your psychological lockdowns and to be able to be intentional with your words. For Scorpio to call themselves out on, oh, you know, I didn't mean to cuss. Oh, that's an affirmation I meant to to do this. I want to clean it up. I want to level up. So Scorpios are all about how people are speaking and promising and whispering sweet nothings in their ear versus they're not. If someone says, oh, I love you, so I'm going to do this. Scorpio is not going to take that as a hook that they need to say the same, same thing back to them the same way or to do. You know, the reciprocity doesn't have to be the exact same way. The Scorpio is going to want to do their love language the way they want to do their love language and hopefully the love languages are compatible but it's not always compatible for you to meet somebody that has the same love language as you it can turn into a little bit of a predictability or monotony so think about that one a little further later if you're a sagittarius uh, happy recent birthday and solar new year you've still got mars lighting it up and venus getting ready to favor you as she slips into sagittarius she's going to be doing that soon and so that's going to be another um social empowerment for you. A lot of Sagittarians I've been talking to, they want to loosen their grip on that job that they've been working at for three or four years or like it's in the last, or you've been there a long time in the last three years, it's become stagnant or it's become irritating and you can't quite put your finger on it. I see for Sagittarians, they're going into a whole new venue of how they get butter on their bread and how they get paid. Some of it might be barter. Some of it might be a couple of different types of, of work options. Uh, you know, like I know one Sagittarius, he loves on the weekends to go play bluegrass music and he does it for tips and he doesn't care because he loves it. It's his passion. Other, the other job he does is he's managed a, a, a store and he's done this and he's done that and he's done construction. And he knows how to take apart a gun and clean it, but he's just that Sagittarius Virgo blend that when he's dedicated to something, he's dedicated. But if it starts to cause his inspirational fire, they'd be challenged. Mm, it's almost time for me to be out of here. So it's the finances. It's the resources. Capricorn's your second house. But it's this. It's this. How do you define what's valuable to you now in 2023 going into 2024? And do you know your worth? And will you stop taking less? If When you know your worth, you don't have to put yourself on sale. People either see it, people either want to invest in you and your life skill sets, or they don't see you and they don't get it. And it's for somebody else. And I never take that personally. If, you, if you're if you really ready to have the light come on and me do some soul work with you and clear up some psychological patterns and help introduce you to your guides, let's rock it. But, you know, if you're if you're wanting to stay stuck in the same patterns, oh, I'm so not your girl. So not your girl, because we're going to own it. <laughs> so Sagittarians are breaking the mold, but I do feel like it'll be centered around making money, what they deem is valuable, starting up a business, doing something on the side. If you're a Capricorn, yay, it's finally time for your birthdays and your, and your solar new year. And this is you're looking at the relationships at the full moon, but you're looking at what's good for you once we get past December 26th. So the full moon in Cancer is revelatory with 
That's the way my daddy did it. I like the way my daddy did it. I didn't like my mother. Wasn't that compatible with my mother? She was alcoholic. She was on drugs. She was absent. She rejected me. I now know that how I carried forward from my childhood were my abandonment, fear of rejection wounds, let's say from the mother, because Capricorn's the father. Now Capricorn's beginning to say, yeah, I'm not going to get stuck in because she did that, because my mother failed me there or my father failed me there. I still have that deficit. No, Capricorn's going to do the work to correct it. And this is that time, the 12th month of 2023, and lean in to therapists, seminars, ceremonies, private one-on-one -on -one consultations with people that will help you when you know you have an abandonment issue, when you know you're needy, when you get into the hopes of a new intimate dynamic, when you know that you get insecure and all that crap comes up, hey, here's a hint, deal with that before you get into your next liaison, you know, deal with it, you know, work on that, not coming in to get a grip on you. If you're Aquarius, <clears throat> if you're an Aquarius, the energy right now has a lot to do with your spiritual dynamics and what needs to have closure. You've got the, the full moon is lighting up your sixth house, who or what's draining you. And have you gotten so busy in your multi-directional activities that you're ignoring your own wellness? So yeah, it's that time to get the acupuncture, the pedicure, the Reiki, the acupressure, the, the red light laser, laser facial or you know physical therapy. It's time to do that with the full moon. And oh, trust me, Aquarius, a Cancerian full moon will show you, you'll feel and your body temple where you're storing the stress. But Capricorn, uh, this cycle is the month before your birthday. So it's a great time for dreams and visions and psychic revelations and finding the right life coach and finding the right therapist and going, oh my God. And they say things like this, I never really looked at it that way. <clears throat> so it's an envisioning and empowering time. And if you're a Pisces, it's, that it's a very compatible, very compatible full moon. <coughs> Sorry, a little dry throat. And then what's happening is it's new networks, new connections. And Capricorn's wanting to further that for you besides just the mood of the moment. Every Pisces I know is saying, when is Saturn out of my sign? <coughs> I want it to go away, make it go away. But if you look back, all that you've gained in the last three years. Interesting, my voice is wanting to cut out on Pisces, and <clears throat> you'll see that you literally had to realize where you were drowning in your own insecurities. So now you're rising up. Capricorn supports you. Mars and Sagittarius helps motivate you, actually, even though it's a square. Mars going into Capricorn. Venus shifting from Scorpio to Sagittarius helps get Pisces out of their head and out of the bed. So this is a sweet spot, full moon for you. And I feel like Pisces that even the square of Mars to Neptune, the only, the only, um, and I want to say it with softness, don't take the extra Xanax, don't take the extra pain pill, don't think that more is better with the Adderall or the hallucinogen not going into the new year. This is a better time for you to what they call like sit with the truth or take it into your dream world instead of looking for an external stimulant to avoid something. And I'm going to leave it there because I don't want to get into judgment, but I'm just don't don't go to excess. This is not the full moon. This is not the year not where Mars is or Neptune or Saturn, Pisces, for you to think more booze, more stimulants. I'll take another. You know, I'll, I'm going to go hallucinate with that. No, uh -uh, no, not this year. Whatever the hell you want to do in 2024 is up to you, but I would be remiss as an astrologer if I didn't warn you about drinking too much, driving the New Year's party. I mean, take the cab, go with a group of people, make sure that you're around it. If you're going to go to the extremes, make sure that you, and it shouldn't be your friend's responsibility, by the way, Pisces, don't become an emotional vampire. But I feel like that it would be better if you like entertained at home or just tip the easier personalities around you. 
if you're an Aries sun or rising, it's a fourth house. I see a lot of Aries over the next three months really settling into loving and harmonizing, blooming where they're planted, so to speak. A lot of Aries have recently relocated or moved, have desires to do so. I feel like this is a final clearing for the home harbor. Dorothy and the Wizard of Oz, there's no place like home. And yet Dorothy had psychological challenges with Annie M and some of the other farmhands. So when you look at the archetypes of that movie and the Wicked Witch of the West, you know, her dark self versus her light self, you begin to find the sweet spot for recharging yourself and mandating that peace is your goal, not getting just pieces of other people in a relationship or just giving people minute pieces of your participation in a relationship. Sometimes Aries, they have such a hot desire and, and they're, you know, they're hot. They come in hot and they want to be passionate. They want to be sensual. They absolutely want to thrill you physically, but sometimes they can overwhelm you with the word battles. You know, like, what'd you say? Why'd you say it that way? Well, what do you have to say about that? So if Aries can get a little back to loosen their grip on taking all the convo seriously and just learning to do deep listening. I think that'll help their love life. And, but I, but I do see them blooming where they're planted, stopping, stop bitching about where you're living right now, Aries, and, and just use the Capricorn energy to make the best that it can be because Aries, you're working on your life path, your legacy, you're committing to long-term goals that will actually stabilize and sustain you for many years. That's the Capricorn Saturn thing. If you're Taurus, Jupiter's in your sign. Heads up, Gemini, you're the next one. Jupiter's going to go into to, uh, Gemini next year. So it's going to be in an air sign. It's going to you know, really stimulate our ability to intellectually enthrall someone. But right now it's still in Taurus and doing the retrograde thing. But if you're a Taurus or a Taurus rising, this is a sweet spot, the full moon. It gets along with Jupiter and Taurus. It's home. It's who you invite over. It's who you want to have the dessert and coffee with or the margaritas with. It's who you want to say, hey, let's go hang out and not tell the others kind of a thing. So it's like really looking around at where all your money has gone with that couch and that pillow and those sheets and that sound system. So it's about really pausing and appreciating what you have built into your home base. And the Capricorn energies have a lot to do with your ground, your ground level, ground zero beliefs. Uh, I see Taurus having a lot of change in their perspectives. Like maybe they're learning something different from the medical dynamic versus the holistic dynamic. I believe that their anchor is going to be, they realize they've got to anchor themselves and to trust in life rather than, well, the doctor said this, so it must be true. And the banker said that, so it must be true. They got to come back to themselves and say, look, these are just specialists, the stockbroker, the nurse, the doctor, they're just specialists in what they do. But how do I feel about that? How do I resonate with that? Do I need to upgrade my beliefs or am I just running on the same old ground like the hamster on its little wheel toy? And finally, Gemini. Um, Gemini, you've got a very interesting year. It's been 12 years since Jupiter has been in your sign. Jupiter expands and it's very generous, and it can get overzealous, and it can get into doing too much extravagant. So you're going to be dealing with that. I feel in 2024, Jim and I will, and Sagittarius, will be taking risk that they held themselves back from. It's going to be like daredevil years for Jim and I and Sagittarius. But this full moon is about you in the second house. It's about you looking at, wow, my definition of what's worth it. And how I value it and my top three priorities definitely has shifted. And I believe that it goes back to 2022 and the people that were orbiting around your life and the beginning of 2022 going into end of this year. And I feel like that as we have planets right now opposing you, Venus going into Sag, Mars and Sagittarius, you're looking at the actions of others more than just the words. And since Gemini can get caught up in the story and they get thrilled by the story that they tend to kind of overlook what somebody's really doing though. So for Gemini, I want to say it's 
What are the actions? Less words, more actual action. So it's your vulnerability. It's life's mystery. It's a whole different psychological positioning that we do when we realize that like someone dies or something dies unexpectedly. Or the other day, there was a plane crash that happened in Asheville. There was a couple of pilots on board. It literally landed on Highway 26 in Asheville and burst into flames. And the two guys survived. I mean, it was nothing, but a a, a small plane burst into flames. And I looked at it and I looked at it off the Asheville news. I said, that right there, that's a book. If they don't know that that was a supernatural miracle, I mean, they mm-hmm. landed on the highway, cars, you know, on it's Highway 26 is a big highway in Asheville. I mean, the whole plane, it's on video on YouTube, the whole thing, uh, just last week, blew, the whole thing just completely incinerated and they survived. And I'm like, you know, when maybe that didn't happen to me or Nicole or you guys in the audience, but when you see something like that on the news miracle. and you realize in a snap of the fingers, the things, you know, we're grumbling and we're complaining, I don't have this yet. I don't have that yet. Look at what didn't happen to you that could have happened to you. And maybe you'll understand the mystery, although not always obvious, of how we're divinely and in a sacred way protected. from. Like we didn't have to go through that. I didn't have to go through a fiery crash to realize I have supernatural favor. So this, the final sign of Gemini going into this Cancerian, very strong long night's moon, cold moon from different cultures. It's about, I, I need to commit to my transformation because what's happening with Pluto changing signs into Aquarius in January all the way into summer, it'll briefly go back into that critical degree of 29 degrees of Capricorn, which we've so had to deal with when mm-hmm. any planet hits 29 degrees <laughs> of any of the 12 zodiac signs. It's like, on steroids, you know, it's mm-hmm. like, oh my God, times 10. Yeah. In your birth chart. And right now. So again, I'll say to you, as we conclude this, wherever Capricorn is in your chart, the Antarctic degree, the 29th degree, there's 12 signs, 30 degrees. When a sign hits that 29th degree, I don't care what sun sign you are. I don't care what rising sign or moon you are. That 29 degrees of Capricorn is like a huge spotlight, a halogen light is in the house of Capricorn that we've got right now. And when it goes into a, it's that whole lockdown stuff that happened in 2020, you know, where the elitist or the authority figures all around the world want to tell the air quotes, we the people, how it's going to be and what to do. Get in your house, shut the door, don't talk back. When Pluto goes into Aquarius, we want to be very, the we the people rise again, but we want to be very mindful of AI chat GPT, you know, they've got those things where it can hear your voice and it can call numbers of people that are related to you and demand ransoms. And of course, it sounds just like you because it's captured your voice. So Kim Commando, who does all the internet stuff, said recently on one of her podcasts, with your closest friends and family, get a safe word. So if they called you saying, oh my God, I just had a call. Are you okay? Somebody's demanding money like they kidnapped you. Here's my, say my safe word. So that way you never say your safe word on the podcast or YouTube or anything like that. But to people that are your closest allies, if it tries to steal your voice, they were talking about it in Knoxville the other day, one of the radio announcers saying, oh, my God, he's been on the radio 30 years. And he goes, listen to this. This is the, the um, algorithm and artificial intelligence and the chat GPT copied my voice off of one of my broadcasts from 10 years ago. It's me. And then they can speed dial like those wonderful invasive spam calls that you get. They speed dial and they use your voice. Mm. So there's pluses and minuses to the social tech and, you know, the high tech and some of these video games and all that and how they have a subliminal effect on you. And things like people talking about smart dust being sprayed upon us. So there's like a, you know, look at the negative side of the alien or futuristic type of a thing and just don't be blind to how just because something is new in the internet or techie or frequencies, don't just buy into it in a cultish way without first taking it back to your heart chakra, your soul center, your pineal, your pituitary gland, your crown chakra, and say, what say you, sacred divine? What say you, my high holy guardian angels, sacred angels? What say you, spirit? 
to what this is that's being presented to me in my dreams and a meditation and a hallucination through this stimulant, through this alcohol. What is this? Is this leaning into a light source or is this something that's wanting to thwart my soul's progress? So I just not putting it out there with the fear base. I just want you to be aware of the possibilities and the mm-hmm. potentialities. Take everything back to spirit. Take everything through the pure essence of your soul, your soul seed. So in conclusion, I would say that the cancer moon is how do I mother myself? How can I be a better parent to my inner child? How much progress has my inner child done at this point in 2023? And has my parental self, my Saturn father, Capricorn, and my Cancerian mother, how much have I rewarded the inner child of Mary that she did it? She saw through it. She didn't become embittered. And You know, she's kinder because of some of those things. And she knows how to set boundaries because of those people that didn't play fair. So this is the moon in most simplest of terms to say, do you forgive yourself? Do you encourage yourself? Do you accept yourself? And when's the last time you just simply patted yourself on the back? And I would also say in conclusion to all of you, ask yourself, like Mary said earlier, what insecurities are sheltering you from moving forward? That's what exactly insecurities right. are sheltering you from taking the crossing, that initiation that allows you to rebirth yourself? This is a letting go season. This is, we're now entering the winter and this is about going into your cocoon in a way, but not, not in a way where, um, you know, we're, you're, you're looking for what needs to go, what has been holding you back from your emotional sense, from your deeper psychic sense, uh, and really be honest with yourself and use the Capricorn energies to get serious, to get disciplined, to, to get regimented on how you are going to take the steps, the practical steps to overcome that. So um, I want to thank you, Mary, well, for being oh, on the you're show welcome, again. And- Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year to everybody. And a couple of songs. Go back to an old song by the Rolling Stones called Emotional Rescue. And go back to now deceased Cancerian George Michael off of his album Faith. And the one he sang, it's got an Arabic type of background. I will be your father figure. That fits this cancer Capricorn dynamic, you know, Mick Jagger and the Rolling Stones, I will be your emotional rescue, you know, and then also that beautiful song off of the album Faith um, that George Michael did, I will be your father figure, man, Mm -hmm. that just, it'll uplift your whole soul. So yeah, they're older, but just the lyrics and how the sound hits you will help you actually feel what Nicole just said. Where do we need to loosen the grip and where can we better support, encourage, and allow both our higher self, our adult self, our human self, our psychological patterns, and our inner child to be in concert with the win-win. Yes, beautiful. And I'd like to wish all of you a very happy holidays and enjoy the new year coming in. We're now getting ready to embark on 2024, which for those of you who are in my tw- um, my winter solstice ceremony, I spoke about what I believe 2024 has in store for us. And uh, so it's, it's going to be powerful. There's a lot of awakening energies that have been uh, hitting us since the early November. And this is the time where you really do need to think about what you are uh, rebirthing yourself as in what needs to go, what is not serving you, what can you not take with you, what burdens you down, what makes things heavy, uh, and really look at aligning yourself back to a path that is true to you. So I love you guys. Have a safe holiday, but of course, please have some fun. Uh, enjoy the, enjoy the new year and I will see you all in 2024. Thanks again for joining me for another show on the Enlighten Up podcast. I love you guys so much for all of your continued support. So remember to raise your vibe, find your tribe and be open to the infinite possibilities held in the mysteries that surround us all.
Thanks again for sharing the show with your family and friends. And if you're new to the show and you need to find out more information about me, please head on over to my website, NicoleFrolic.com, where you can join my newsletter. And please follow me on Instagram, Telegram, and YouTube. Keep your light bright and I'll see you next week.